Hey guys, we're going into my front parlor today and we're going to bring spring in there. And I'm gonna talk about the whole process, so join me. We're gonna start right in with the very first step. So the first thing I did was I created this picture and I love this picture. I love this picture because I love the children. They're adorable. I love the little dog. I love the background and the colors. Everything is very spring. And it takes it a notch up from kitsch, you know, when you're going with the bunnies. And I think bunnies and whimsical things are great in the spring, but I didn't want to overdo it because if you overdo it, you're going too far. So I've got this darling picture. These kids are perfect. The background is perfect. And it just brings a lot of color into the room. I'm not afraid of the scale. This is a 30 by 40. And I like to bring a big picture into the room. It makes a statement and it brings in the color. And since the walls are white, I wanted that. Now I had originally ulterior motives for this room. I decided to use it kind of as a background for my very new YouTube channel called Anne Clay Early American Style, which is gonna be more of a slow living, um, maybe more of an ASMR kind of thing, uh, a little more imagination, maybe some more history, uh, some readings. And uh, so I thought, anyway, when I, when I um, branded my website, I did it all in blues, and I thought, oh, I really want blues in the background, but, you know, blues don't really go with this color brown that I painted in here and I didn't really want to change it that much. So I decided to take some of my cues off of that picture that I put in. So that's the first step. Now, the second step is to put some real touch. I want to learn how to do that. I do have a free lesson you can get. Just go to the description box or the comment section and follow the link and you can get that off my website but I love how the Real Touch Antique Tulips look. I've got them in a red wear picture and I love the way this looks. Now these are really cool old sconces that I purchased from Jerry Lynn, who is an antique dealer in the Cape. And she sent them to me with some beeswax candles and aren't they just adorable? I mean, they're really great. They're not the same size, but they look good there together. And I'm loving the way this is looking. Now I could fill this up with a whole bunch of garland and everything else. Right now I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna let the picture and the tulip stand on their own and keep it clean, keep it, you know, this is what I've been doing more. I've been keeping things minimal. However, you're gonna see in this room, I'm kind of changing things around a little, bringing a little more life in. This room has been very austere for a while. I wanted more of a pilgrim style, but I'm changing it around. So let's see what I'm doing. Now you remember a couple years ago in the fall, I painted this brown and I really wanted this very early American style. So I have a lot of my antiques in here. I have that super cool clock. And uh, this Christmas I went out and bought a new round table. It's a flip top table. It is a reproduction but I got a really good deal on it. And then of course I have that gorgeous pine cabinet. So things have been looking pretty primitive in here. That is how I love it in the fall. And then at Christmas I decorate it with all the greens and the lights and it looks charming because it gives me a blank slate to work with. And I love that until around February when the winter has really been getting to me. We've had a nice patch of sun for a while, but for about a month and a half, we didn't see any sun. And at that point, I started to feel kind of desperate. And I thought, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to sink into a depression? Or maybe I should just start decorating for spring. So I started getting bunnies and ordering bunnies and doing things. And I created this beautiful woman and I love her. Look at the yellows and the colors in there. And I thought, I'm gonna go ahead and bring those colors into this room. Bring a lot of warmth, but bring yellows for spring. You know, that's the first color we always end up with in the spring. And so right now I'm showing you how I'm hanging her right here on the wall. And she is just gonna make so much of a difference in that space. 
I love her. Now, for, for also for your information, I did actually order one of my sister. I put my sister in a picture and I'm going to put her up in this room too and with the same color tones. Don't you just love how that yellow and that gold brings out that pine? It's just really, it makes a huge difference. And then when I start looking at that warmth, I think, okay, I want some joy and some life and some color in this room because a lack of color is great during the fall. I love the browns, I love the rusts, but wow, in the spring, you need a little more color. Now, the truth is that that picture would go fine in the fall too. You see, I do have a rust, rugged chick goose up here. That may or may not make the cut as I go through the house. This is my initial, this is my like step one. What am I gonna do to this room? I am going to start adding some images with color. That is the very first thing I'm doing because you can see that everything outside at this point is so brown. Brown, 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 brown. Brown, brown, brown. <laughs> Can I, did I say brown? It's just really brown. So I needed that color so badly. Now what you don't know when you're in this room is it is freezing. Now you can look at this room and think, oh, it's a pretty room, but boy, without the fire going, you don't wanna be in this room in the winter because it is cold, like 40 degrees cold. So here's my step one. Let's go on to my step two. Okay, step two in my transformation was taking that tablecloth off and maybe putting a little scene for the goose. So I have these very large eggs that I picked up at Laney's and uh, she picked them up at an estate sale. So I don't even know what they're made of, but they're super cool. And I thought, well, let's just, you know, give a little hay, which now is laying on the floor in my bedroom because it tipped over but do a little hay, do a little eggs, and, and at least you have kind of a an Easter look. I'm not loving this. This is just me starting to play around. And I think that's what you have to do when you're working on a home and you're working on a design is you play. You just start putting things together and you think, what am I looking for? Because honestly, when I'm looking at this room right now, I'm not really sure what I want it to be. All right, now we're at the third phase where I decide I'm gonna pull the table into the middle of the room and I now have a curtain. It's snowing outside, so it's no longer all gray. Now it's white and gray. And um, I do have a little bunny. Do you see my bunny flag way in the distance? I have the bunny flag out by the road and it's so cute and it's being snowed on, but whatever. So I created these curtains, created this pattern, and I really love them, but I only have one in so far here. I was getting a tester, and so I decided I needed to order more. So then of course I have to wait two weeks to get the other curtains. But I started moving things around the room and I thought, well, let's put the table in the middle. That's gonna give us room on the sides to do things. I threw the wheel, spinning wheel over there, uh, the clock, and just playing with what I have. Now, I don't have a matching set of chairs to go around the table. I don't have ideal furniture to be in this room. These are just the things that kind of happen to go in there right now. So things definitely need to change. Things need to come together. I've got some good bare bones pieces. I've got the idea of the curtains. I've got the clock. I've got that table in the middle of the room. That mirror will stay, and of course, that beautiful picture that I put up, because that is my inspiration piece. That and the picture over my fireplace are my inspiration pieces to bring color and life back into this room for the upcoming seasons. I really, really think that that pine cabinet looks so much warmer with that color next to it. And that does give me a cue. For instance, if I did a wallpaper with those golds in it, it would really, really be warm. Now this is the pattern of the curtain that I have designed and I really love it. It's kind of a sage green and tan and reds. 
and it's really very pretty. These curtains are nice. They're blackout curtains, so they're thick. They have this good hanging quality to them, but they're not the kind of blackout curtains that you look at and they look non-dressy. These are very dressy. I am holding this up with a little piece of yarn and the yarn is affixed to an eyelet. See the white background? Very nice. It's one piece, but it's heavy fabric. It's got a little bit of sheen to it. It hangs really nicely. I sell them on my website um, by one panel each. So I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of them in here. And I'm kind of feeling like there's so much more I want to do to this room. This is a parlor. And because it's a parlor in an old house, this would have been the door that everyone came into and it would have been where they would have entertained guests. This would have been the very best room. If someone came over, the people would put their best foot forward in this room and put all their best things in there. So they'd put that mirror or looking glass. They'd have a beautiful big clock that would show that they had some money. They might have some books in there to show that they um, are accomplished and well-read. They would have their nicest furniture. So here you can see that is my flip top table. It's probably made in the 80s. I don't know, but it's pretty cool. And then some of my antique banister back chairs. This one is actually a reproduction that I picked up. And uh, according to Roz, it's not a very good reproduction. I do like it because it's very solid. But none of these chairs really goes together. And you can put things that aren't really together together but obviously this is a very bad idea that flip top table next to the table is just something I threw there and that's just not a good look so that's definitely not going to stay but I'm just looking around and figuring out what to do you did see a minute ago I did put a rug under there I had originally a red rug and a wool rug and I took that out and I put this rug that I designed in there that's actually a tavern sign rug, a Dornier rug, and so um, I liked it there on the floor. I did think about maybe designing another rug that has more of that auburn color in it, and we'll see. Maybe I will. I don't know. Now the day has arrived. All my curtains are in, and what a difference it makes to put those curtains in there. I love those curtains. Honestly, they are kind of a wallpaper pattern. So they bring in that warm feeling of wallpaper without actually papering my room. Now there is this wonderful invention called peel and stick paper now that you can put wallpaper up and you can pull it off again within two years and it'll just pull right off. So that's another option for me. This is a less expensive way to bring some of that pattern into the room. And since you know me, I'm changing everything every few months. Um, I don't want to make a huge investment in what I'm doing. And these are a pretty small investment considering they are uh, really looking pretty. I love the way they drape the windows. But you see how I have it higher up? Like a lot of people will, will gather it in in the center of the window. If you do that, you lose half of the top of the window. And I don't want to lose that whole top of the window because these windows, the 12 over 12s, they're absolutely gorgeous. So things are starting to look good here. I moved the vase to the left and I put a little... Um, a little bird's nest on the right and I'm gonna put a few eggs in there and then Tom built me a fire so that I could work in here because you can't work in this room without a fire in the winter and I think the fire just brings that cozy look into the room now you can see I have set up kind of a desk in the corner and a flip top table over there right by the window to kind of cover up where the um, radiator is and it just gives kind of a central focus point over at that window putting that little warm golden basket up there so I'm liking the looks of that I like that little table I can move it around and it's uh, pretty handy just a little flip top table I picked that up at primitive village primitives in Sturbridge I love that place so much every time I go I find something I want or a few things I want and uh, it's a great consignment place for primitive goods. 
Now over there, you can see that I have my gateway gate leg table and I flipped it open a little bit and put that banister back chair there. It's a yoke back chair, I really like it. It brings the yellow into the corner. Stuck that little lantern there and put a little teacup because doesn't a room like this make you wanna have a teacup? Now you'll see on the right, I actually have a rug and that rug was made to match the curtains. However, because it came from a different lab, there's a different dye lot. And so this looked a little more minty. So I really couldn't put that in the room. Now, when you look at it in this light, it doesn't look so bad. It's, it's the whole point of how um, different fabrics take the dye that we give them. This is from my same pattern, but it looks a little different. So anyway, I tried to put that in the corner, but it didn't work in the corner because uh, it's just too big. And I knew that, but I thought I'd just see what it would look like in the corner. So I, um, if I were to leave it there, I'd have to slip it under that um, clock, which there's no way I want to do. And also it's over the outlet in the corner and that's a fire hazard and it would make it stick up, stick up. So that's not going to be in the corner, but I did think, you know, that would be a way to cozy that corner up and make it a little cozier, but you can see there is definitely a color discrepancy in those two greens. So just beware of that. If you're, um, purchasing off my website, unless you go for the, um, higher priced match thing. There could be some discrepancies if you're trying to mix and match and I wouldn't want you to be disappointed. All right. Now, what did I do? I got some wonderful flowers. I sent shirtless Tom to the grocery store. He owed me Valentine's flowers anyway. So I sent him to the grocery store, got some flowers. We made these eggs the other day. I have a video out on how to make those eggs. You can grab them in the link in the description box or in the comments section. You can grab the free plans for that. So I put those pretty colors out there on the table, but it's too primitive looking now for this beautiful parlor. Now the parlor is getting more formal and we want to be a little more formal. So we're showing out our best china, which in my case I purchased at Salvation Army a few years ago. And we're gonna go ahead and put those wooden eggs in the china. Those are really cute eggs. They're just so easy to make. I mean, they are really easy to make. That's just cinnamon on them and painted wood. So uh, we do show you how to do that. And I'm lining them up in there next to the flowers. And oh, how pretty that is. There's so nothing like fresh flowers for the spring. If you want to bring spring and romance into a room, those are going away and these are staying really, really pretty. Now they're on a tea towel. This is a uh, kitchen towel. I also have them on my website. They are huge, so they could be used as a runner too. I am selling runners and, and uh, actually cloth napkins too now. So all that's on there. And I will be putting, putting new designs up all the time. So Tom is blowing on the fire because the wood is wet. We have a lot of rain, a lot of moisture, and the wood gets wet and then it doesn't burn well, so it sizzles. So he's down there with some kindling, blowing on it, trying to get that fire going a little better for me. Bless his heart. He's always willing to do that stuff, even though it takes away from what he's doing during the day. He is definitely a servant, this man. I'm walking through the room and I wanna show you that I have just hung up this picture over here. Now, doesn't that just warm up the corner? I mean, it brings that warmth into it. You can, re it reflects through the mirror. It just looks like a place that maybe the woman of the house might be sitting. If I wanted to put a little rug there, I do have one that would match the curtains, but I was planning on putting that in my bathroom. But isn't that cute? I just love it. This is a beautiful scene right now. This is actually the look I want the whole room to have. And it's it's a little, it's more cozy. It's definitely more decorated. And then you look at this side of the room and you're like, oh wow, that's pretty sparse. Everything else is looking pretty sparse. The dogs are wondering what Tom's doing. 
Dewey's always there to help with everything. Also, they like to eat the wood, which is kind of a problem. So, so far, I'm feeling really happy with this room. It's looking so much more springy, so much better. And uh, this is where we've gone right now with it. But I think I'm gonna be doing more to this room as time goes on. But I wanted to show you the transformation you can make just by changing out the pictures a little bit, adding some flowers into the mix, adding a fire. If you have a fire, that's totally going to make it cozy. And it's really just the little things, adding curtains, adding a few pillows, adding a pretty basket, changing your furniture around in the room, maybe changing out the rug, um, changing out your wall hangings, I think gives you the most impact. I want to just take you on a little tour through this room right now. This is a print that I purchased at the Salvation Army when we first moved into the house. And I, um, I just used a Michaels frame. I popped it into a Michael stock frame. And I think it's really pretty. I actually did a whole series of them. And my daughter has some of them up in her Victorian home too. You can see this is a close look at that little flip top table that I have. Super cute. And there you see the snow outside. Now inside that basket, I put some yarn and a baby blanket that my sister was knitting at the time of her death. So um, I took that even though I don't knit. It is my sister's knitting and it's beautiful spring colors and that comes out every spring just to give me another piece of her. This, These are the curtains. I think they're beautiful. I like how they hang. I like the thickness of them and I really love the pattern. So over here, you can see my favorite corner in the room. That beautiful clock just makes such a statement. That mirror was in the barn when we bought the house. And that's a picture I designed. I love that little desk type place. It just looks like you're gonna have a cup of tea, read your little book, or maybe write a letter to someone. I put a little plant in there. I see it's crooked and has to be straightened out, but I'll do that later. As we come around the room, you can see over here, I have a space for another picture and you can see the fire. That's the Easter Bunny mold. Like I always had chocolate from my grandmother. And I think of her at Easter and the chocolate of my grandmother. And this is going to sound really crazy, but there was a show on Davy and Goliath that I watched when I was a kid. And the Easter special was the little boy Davy. He was going to do eggs with his grandma and um, he was looking forward to it. And then his grandma dies, which now that I think about it, what a harsh little show for little kids to watch. So I was always afraid that my grandma was going to die because that grandma reminded me of my grandma that gave me the Easter bunnies. And I was so afraid that she was gonna die after I watched that show. And after that, I started being afraid that everybody was gonna die. And come to think of it, that might have been, that might have been the root of my anxiety when I was in second grade. All right, I just had a little therapy session, but look at this room, isn't it pretty? I mean, it's looking so beautiful and so different. Now I did order a rug for not a rug i ordered a tablecloth a lace tablecloth for that table we'll see how i like it i don't know but it does give me options for a different look if i want to go even more feminine at some point you know this look can almost transition into a french country look or an english country look and i love all those styles too so I flip around in my styles. I, I decorate according to my mood. And even though my house is definitely an early American house, you've seen me change it out from primitive. I've had French country in it. I have this, which I would call it a pretty colonial style, but it could also transition into English country. There are so many ways you can style your house. And people, there is no right or wrong. Do what you want to do. Do you. 
Right now, I threw Martin Van Leeuwen in the corner just because I couldn't stand that bare wall. But he is the wrong style. But I wanted to put him there so I could show you how I've brought different styles into this room with really very little expense and very little physical effort. So I think there's more that I'll do in here. But for now, this is my spring room. And I'm looking forward to show you as I decorate some of the other rooms in my house. And as I go maybe a little further with this room, Roz from Angel House Designs has a really great chair to replace that one that I have down there by the wall. And today, Shirtless Tom and I are gonna go out to antiquing and we're gonna see if we could find a couple banister back chairs. You never know. Sometimes you find just what you're looking for when you go looking.